some more paper planes in class. Now, they're not bad, but even my best ones don't stay up very long. What my plane really needs is more thrust. You see, if you want your aircraft to fly, it needs lift to get it into the air. But it's thrust that keeps it going once it's up there. Some aircraft use propellers to create thrust, using the movement of air over the propeller blades. But there's another, more powerful way to do the job. Jet engines! They're the power behind most large planes in the sky. Phew! There's some clever science behind the power of jet engines and it all starts in the 18th century. Now, obviously you didn't get many planes in the 18th century. OK, you didn't get any planes, but there's a very good reason why we're here. There was a famous scientist who came up with the idea that's behind all jet engines. Uh, 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 my third law of motion states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. I thank you. That's Isaac Newton! Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So what's that all about? Think of it this way. Have you ever let go of a balloon before the end's been tied? What happens? <laughs> Right. Air comes out of the balloon, doesn't it? That's what makes the rude sound. And as it does, the balloon's propelled all around the room in all sorts of crazy directions. Well, that's Newton's equal and opposite reactions at work. A jet engine is like a tube in which fuel and air are burned under very high pressure. It gets so amazingly hot that it forces gases out of the back of the tube. This pushes the plane forward. This means that the jet engine and the plane it's attached to are off. All that air that the engine needs is sucked in by a giant fan at the front of the engine. Three, two, one. <laughs> if you want to take a trip around the moon, propellers and jet engines wouldn't be any use because there isn't any air up in space. You'd need to take your own air in tanks to mix with the fuel. This sort of engine is called a rocket. And we have the Now, whilst Newton could take credit for the scientific principle behind jets, Someone else had to actually build the first one. Although it was really two people. Meet Dr. Hans von Oheim, a German who designed a turbojet in Germany just before the Second World War. What he didn't know was that the British were working on something very similar. Now, while Sir Frank Whittle registered a patent for his turbojet before Hans did, Hans beat Sir Frank to the skies, with his plane taking flight in 1939. It wasn't until 1941 before the British jet was airborne, so who can take the credit? <laughs> These days, both designers are recognised as being the co-inventors of the jet engine, even though both worked separately and knew nothing of the other's work. You'll find jet engines on almost all types of aircraft, and there's one thing they have in common. They're fast! We use the speed of sound as a measuring stick for airplane velocity. Sound moves through air at about 760 miles an hour. And if an airplane reaches the speed of sound, its speed is called Mark 1. Now, if an airplane reaches double the speed of sound, its speed is Mark 2, which would mean travelling over 1,500 miles an hour. And if you think that's fast, well, it gets even faster than that. Some jets can reach Mark 3 or even more, while space rockets can get up to Mark 10 and beyond. It's just a shame I can't build a rocket for my paper plane. Time for me to fly. See you soon and chucks away. Amy's Aviation, with support from the Royal Aeronautical Society. Find out more about aviation at funkinslive.com forward slash aviation.